Steven here, and this episode is about modding. In fact, it's about what modding is. Modding is something you do to Minecraft, but not just that. It's a word that comes from modification, which means to change. And it's an idea that has been around as long as there has been software. As long as there has been software, people have taken pieces of software and written other pieces of software that modify it. And so Minecraft is no different. Minecraft didn't invent modding, just people use modding, uh, which was an old idea, to change how Minecraft works. Before we talk about Minecraft modding, let's talk a little bit about how Minecraft does work. Let's say this is you, and you're looking at your computer screen and Minecraft is running. And so here's Minecraft. I'll just draw it pretty big so that uh, we can draw some stuff inside of it. So you're looking at it. And what's inside of Minecraft? Well, there's blocks. Um, maybe you've built like a tower of blocks right here. And maybe there's a creeper like standing right here. There's my creeper. Um, and if you're not on the internet, then this is all you see because uh, you're not playing a multiplayer game. It's just your version of Minecraft. But as you probably know, Minecraft is a multiplayer game, so it has something that's called a server. And by the way, this is called the client. So what you look at and what connects to the server is called the client. So the, the thing you turn on when you say, oh, I'm turning on Minecraft, that's the client. The thing you connect to when you want to play a, a multiplayer game can be out on the internet, so I'm going to draw this wavy, cloudy line, um, and I'll draw the server out there on the internet. Now, it doesn't have to be on the internet. It could very well be on your computer, but you sh usually still draw it with a cloudy line here to represent that it could be out on the internet. So, server. And what a client and server do is they talk to each other, and the server can talk to many clients. So I'll just pretend that there's, you know, maybe this is your friend across the street, and maybe this is some guy, you know, in uh, China or India, and they have Minecraft clients as well. And they are also able to connect to the server. So let's just pretend that all of you are connected to the same server. Your client can send messages to that server, and the server can actually send messages back to you. And same with each of the other connected clients. They can send messages to the server, the server can send messages back. And in this way, all of the clients are able to talk to each other, but without ever talking directly. The clients will send messages across the server, and the server sends them to the other clients. Like, for example, let's just suppose that uh, you break a block. You broke that block with your pickaxe, and, uh, and what that does is it triggers your client to send a message across to the server. I'll draw the message like a little um, envelope. And that message would carry some information that says something like, you know, some block got broken. Maybe this was block number four. So it's like one, zero, one, two, three, four, and uh, block number four got broken. And so then on the server, this is what's kind of interesting, is the server actually has a copy of the entire state of the game as well. So it has that same tower that you built, and it has that same creeper in the exact same spot. And so when that, that block gets broken on your machine, it sends a message across to the server, and the server is like, ah, okay, I see that this client broke this block, so I'll break it as well. And I'll go ahead and send a message to each of the other clients telling them that block number four got broken. So it sends a message to every connected client saying block number four got broken. So that these clients, which also have a copy of the game, tells them that they should break block number four as well. So when they get that message, they remove that block from the game as well. And the same thing might happen if uh, you killed this creeper. Your client would send a message across, another message across to the server, saying that it killed a creeper. The server would then kill that creeper and send a message to the other connected clients about that creeper getting killed. In this way, 
the client server system allows every game of Minecraft, yours, the one on the server, and the ones on the other clients to be what's called synchronized. So there's in multiplayer gaming, all of the game states are synchronized. And this idea of synchronization and the idea of clients and servers, these, these are ideas that, once again, were not invented by Minecraft. In fact, they were around a long time. Lots of games use this. Lots of games before Minecraft ever came along. And lots of software that's not even games. The idea of clients and servers and synchronization of state, that is an incredibly important idea in computer science that um, has nothing to do with Minecraft other than Minecraft borrowed it and used it to make a really, really cool game. Now that you understand how the server and clients are interacting with each other, let's talk about modding. So like I said at the beginning, a mod or modification is just a piece of software that modifies another piece of software. So your client, if it has a mod installed, might, uh, might modify what your client does. For example, it might add new blocks. Um, it, maybe you have another mod installed that uh, modifies the client to add new like creatures. Um, and there's all sorts of other things. You can modify how the game looks or the sounds or maybe it gives you new items, etc, etc, etc. There's a huge variety of things you can do by modifying how the client works. And in the same way, you can have modifications to the server. Because like I said, mods are just pieces of software that modify other pieces of software. And the server is a piece of software, so you can definitely have a mod on the server. Usually, usually, or historically, um, mods on the server for Minecraft have been called plugins. And mods on the client have been called mods. But, conceptually speaking, they're exactly the same thing. Plugins and mods are the same thing. They just for Minecraft happen to denote which piece of software is getting modified. Um, before Minecraft came along, people used the words plugin and mods interchangeably. In fact, there are even other words like extensions, for example. So mods, plugins, and extensions, these are all words that computer programmers use to talk about software modifying other software. Now, on the server, usually the kind of modification is a little bit different. What doesn't usually happen is you don't usually add new things like creatures and blocks. What you usually add is new functionality. For example, this could be like a mini game. Um, one example of a mini game, I'm just going to, you know, think of this off the top of my head. Let's say this is player one, and this is player two, and this is player three. This mini game mod or plugin might keep track of how many blocks each player has destroyed. Or let's say how many creepers each player has destroyed. So when player one destroyed this creeper and this message got sent, then this mod might say, oh, okay, um, in addition to just destroying that creeper, I'm also going to tally up points. I'll give player one one point. And then it goes ahead and sends the creeper destroyed message to the other clients and so on and maybe uh, maybe player one that's you maybe you destroy 10 creepers then this mini game would keep track of that and let's just pretend your friends don't have any creeper kills yet and you got to 10 first and so this mini game might say you won and then would send a you won message back to all of the clients <coughs> saying that player one was victorious because player one destroyed 10 creepers first. So that's, uh, that's what a server-side plugin might do, is change the kind of multiplayer interaction that you're having. Whereas a client-side plugin would change the way things look to you on your client or add new stuff into your game of Minecraft, but it wouldn't affect other people's games. Now that we've talked a little bit about how Minecraft works and how different kinds of modding work, let's talk about where mods come from. 
So to talk about where mods come from, let me shrink down this diagram we have so far. Mods are just pieces of software that modify other pieces of software. So you might be able to guess that where they come from is that some coder creates them. So I'll draw a little coder here. I'll give him a hat. So this coder writes code and that code ends up getting installed on somebody's client or on somebody's server and gives them either a cool mini game or new blocks or new creatures. But this guy, this coder, is the one who dreams it all up and creates it and makes it possible for you to mod your game or mod your server. And the way that he creates these mods is to use a program called an IDE. So programmers, coders, use IDEs to create pieces of software. And sometimes those pieces of software are mods that go on the client. Sometimes those pieces of software are plugins that go on the server. But this could very well be any piece of software. You could use an IDE. In fact, the creators of Minecraft used an IDE to create Minecraft itself. They used it to create the client. They even used an IDE to create the server. So IDEs are extremely powerful tools that programmers use to create other pieces of software. And IDEs, just like modding, just like clients, just like servers, just like synchronization, these were around long before Minecraft was. They just happened to be used um, to create Minecraft and to create Minecraft mods. And by the way, IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. And by the way, while we're talking about vocabulary words, let's write some of those down. So if you're going to take anything away from this video, here's what I suggest you take away. Vocab. So modding. That is modifying software with other software. It's writing code to modify other code, basically. You should remember that it is old. It is older than Minecraft. Minecraft did not invent modding. You should remember client and server. And you should also remember that these ideas are also really old, really powerful ideas. Minecraft did not invent clients and servers. Um, you should remember the idea of a message. These little envelopes, I drew them as envelopes um, that go from client to server. Those, um, that's how clients communicate with servers and that's another powerful old idea in computer science. You should remember the idea of an IDE, a tool, a place where coders create software, and you should remember what it stands for, Integrated Development Environment. And now I know you already know this word, but you should you should remember the word coder now in a different way. Um, a coder is a man or a woman who uses an IDE and creates really cool things um, using that IDE. They can create Minecraft itself, they can create mods, they can create, they could even create another IDE using an IDE. Um, they, uh, they are very, very smart, creative people who dream up new kinds of blocks and new kinds of creatures, new kinds of mini games to put into Minecraft. They dream up all sorts of new software that haven't seen the light of day before, and they design them and give them to other people so that they can enjoy them.